Hello, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm going to tell you a story, a story about needless disability caused by blindness and deafness across the world. And I'm going to tell you about a device that is set to make a difference. There's a vast number of eye and ear diseases causing deafness and blindness. Traditionally, a thalmoscope like this was used to diagnose eye problems, and a similar device, the otoscope, was used to diagnose ear problems. Earlier diagnoses means better outcomes. This is a photograph of an eye. In the centre, you have a pupil, a round black circle. It works very much like a camera, like the aperture, or the gap in the middle, that lets light from the outside pass to the back of the eye, creating an image that's then transferred on to the brain for further processing. As you can see, the pupil is black. Many of the diseases causing blindness are hiding behind the pupil. So we need to find a way to view the back of the eye. If you simply align a light source within viewing apparatus and the eye of interest, you can sometimes get glimpses of the back of the eye. The eye starts to glow. We often see this as the red reflex or the red glow in old family photographs. This is the principle of the ophthalmoscope. Charles Babbage, best known for inventing the first computer, also realised that the same principle, aligning the line of sight with your own eye and the patient's eye, lets you view the retina, the back of the eye. The ophthalmoscope was born. Since then, a number of devices have been developed. They've become more and more complex and more expensive. The ophthalmoscope is still a vital tool in trained hands, but it also has become more complex and more expensive become loaded with features and for the average student or healthcare worker utterly really complicated and unnecessary. More has become less. Less easy to use, less affordable and definitely less user friendly. In the 1960s and 70s we could put a man on the moon. Fast forward nearly five decades and the state of the art eye health in parts of Africa and other parts of the world is still just a torch and the naked eye. There's no chance of seeing inside that pupil. Bill Gates made a really interesting point a few years ago about how medical innovation has only just started to target those at the very bottom of the economic pyramid. Innovation, for all its brilliance, I mean, if you look around you every day, it, it is incredible. It is sometimes misguided. The energy, the time, and the money is still driven by the rich West for the rich West. This really is a call to action to really develop the tools, equipment and training necessary to help those most in need. This is Ratnama. She lives in the rural village in India. She's going blind and increasingly isolated. Her children had to move away to the city and her husband died 12 years ago. In her own words, She's living in darkness, just waiting to die. Ratnama is one of millions, millions across the world who are blind or visually impaired. The World Health Organization estimates that around 250 million people worldwide are visually impaired. That's the whole population of the United Kingdom. You add France, add Germany and Spain, all visually impaired or blind. It's incredibly hard to imagine. And the problem is, those with the highest disease burden have the least access to resources. It's the poor that suffer the most. And the tools that are necessary are becoming more complex, expensive, and harder to use. In low middle income settings, most community and healthcare workers don't have access to even the most basic tools. So how do we come up with a solution that's low cost and easy to use and portable and specifically targeted for those most in need in low middle income settings? Fred Hollows 
was a very interesting character. He was an ophthalmologist, a philanthropist, and he was known for his fight to improve the health of indigenous communities in remote areas in Australia. His legacy brought microsurgery for the eyes to the masses by bringing down the cost of the components of the surgery. Inspired by this, John Sanford Smith, William J. Williams, and Sandy Holt Williams set out to find a device and a diagnostic tool to empower those most in need with simple but cheap solutions. If we strip out some of the components from the traditional scopes, say using LEDs instead of old style filament bulbs, we can reduce size, weight, and energy requirement, which is crucial so we can use solar panels for the energy uh, supply to the device. And it also crucially makes it cheaper. If we strip out the mirror inside the device, again, we can make it smaller and get physically closer to your own eye and the patient's eye for a better and wider view. <clears throat> the device was first conceived with just a little lollipop stick, then wooden cutout, and then a device cut from blocks of plastic. Then the solar panel was added, little circuit boards. What followed then was the production of the mould, so we could scale up production and really drive down the cost of the device. All this has led us to develop the new Mark III model, which will be released this year. It's a tool designed really for any setting, from the United Kingdom to Sierra Leone, to Australia, to, to India. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce the Arclight. It's a simple but innovative, powerful tool. It has an ophthalmoscope at one end for eye examination, a solar panel in the middle, so no need for replacement bulbs, batteries, or other expensive consumables that the old traditional devices required. And in the other end is a loop. With a simple addition of a scope, it transforms into an otoscope for ear examination. So no need for expensive traditional otoscopes. It's actually been used by CBM Scotland, a major disability charity, to screen for preventable or treatable ear diseases across Zambia. And it's also funded by the Scottish Government. So now we have the shiny new device. It works very well, it's great. But to really get the most out of it, we need extra training. Photographs and books are great, but they don't really tell you the full picture. They don't really prepare you for the, the work out in the field, if you like. For that, we need hands-on experience. We need to practice the hand-eye coordination, the basic practical skills. So we've also developed simulation eyes. It costs pennies to make, and they simulate a variety of conditions so that it builds the confidence of the examiner and consolidates knowledge. So to complete the arc light, we've added a simulation eye to the kit a headband for hands-free examination, a connector cable, a vision chart for near and distance vision, as well as the speculum for ear examination. And it's all squeezed into this small little box, like a TARDIS if you like. Well, that's great. We've got the arc light, we've got the extras. But how do we truly get the most out of it? How do users consolidate their knowledge? How do they learn from the experience as they use the device. We've also teamed up with University College London to develop a multimedia training tool and program that can be loaded onto a memory chip inside the Arclight. If you connect the Arclight to one of these, a smartphone, which are essentially everywhere now, even across large parts of Africa, you can view videos, training materials, quizzes offline any setting, in the most remote places to urban areas. No need for data connectivity, internet, or Wi-Fi. There's a growing evidence base that the Arclight is at least as good as the much more expensive and heavier traditional ophthalmoscopes at detecting signs of diabetes inside the eye, chronic diseases like glaucoma, as well as abnormal red reflexes in kit and children. And crucially, it's much, much cheaper. 
It's much more portable and it's solar powered, making it independent of consumables like bulbs and batteries and other expensive goods. It really is the cost effective ophthalmoscope and otoscope for the 21st century. It's certainly been widely used so far, uh, mainly uh, in Africa, Indonesia, and the Pacific Rim. Um, but importantly, we've also set up a social enterprise which sells the Arclight to high resource settings like the United Kingdom. And all the profit generated through that and then enable us to fund distribution, training and equipment for those most in need in low and middle income settings. So this is the tool, the arc light, the box, the extras. So we work out in the field, we've got a tricky case, we're not sure what to do, we want to show others what we're looking at, maybe get a second opinion, or even for teaching. Well, if we, with the addition of a simple clip, we can add the arc light to the back of a mobile phone and acquire digital images and videos. We can just use a rubber band, costs pennies, does the exact same job. This is an example of a video. A nice healthy eye. The optic disc, the yellow round circle, connects the eye to the brain. The red little lines of the blood vessels all looking nice and normal. No concerns there. This is a video of an infant. A nice glowing pair of eyes. It's what we call a red reflex. This is an easy and standard screening procedure. If you look at the picture on the bottom left, you can see a nice glowing eye on the right. On the left eye, just a partially obscured red reflex. Could be a cataract. Cataract in a child, if not diagnosed and treated early, means a lifetime of blindness. Similarly, in the picture above that on the left, a nice glowing eye in the right, the left, no reflex at all. Now that could be something as sinister as a cancer. And if not diagnosed early, it would mean death to the child. The red reflex screening is an essential part that every infant across the world should have. But it's often not performed due to lack of access to tools, training and equipment. That's set to change. We've also developed simulation eyes that mimic diseases at the front of the eye, like I just mentioned. You can see on, the, on your left, a nice normal glowing reflex. The one in the middle, slightly obscured view, again, could be cataract. The one on the right is what we call a white pupil. Again, making us very suspicious that there's something more sinister going on. Sense International, another major disability charity, are now using the device for infant screening in a number of countries in East Africa to pick up exactly these diseases early. We can also use the otoscope for ear examination and the phone to obtain videos like this, a nice and healthy eardrum, an ear canal, a bit of wax. Again, that's all normal. It's nice being able to acquire digital images and videos um, but we feel the greatest impact of the Arclight is for people like Ratnama, who are living in rural communities, isolated and are going blind across the world. By training local healthcare workers like Santosh, we're able to give them the tools that they previously did not have access to and treat communities that had never have access to eye care in the past. Santosh is now able to perform comprehensive eye examinations for the very first time. And he diagnosed Ratnama with advanced cataract and referred her on to the local treatment centre for surgery. She's now independent again and has seen her grandchild for the very first time. The eye really is a superb window to health and disease. And we strive to make that window more affordable and more accessible. We believe ending avoidable blindness is achievable. Thank you very much.